Hi guys, my name is Sky Tranter and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Coptic Stitch artist book of your very own. Okay, first of all, you are going to need the following. You're going to need foam core, stylus, four tapestry needles, wax linen thread. You need two lots of two meters. You need your A4 pad of rains paper, a ruler, a glue stick. You're going to need to raid your mum's kitchen and get a butter knife. You also need a pencil, possibly an eraser, two box card um, cards, which should be in your pack, and also a pair of scissors. And you'll need to get your mulberry paper or your um, your, or your marble paper. You only need two lots of each of those, but you can choose which one you want. Okay. Okay, so make sure you've got all these items in front of you before you start, because the worst thing you can do is have to run off and get these bits as you go. Alrighty, step one, first thing you need. So make sure you also have your little instructions with you because not everyone is a visual learner. I'm a visual learner. I learn better by doing things uh, while I'm watching, but there's also instructions there. So make sure you have your instructions. Um, if you don't have the instructions there, guys, just email me and I can, I can send you the instructions really easily. Otherwise, enjoy following the video. Okay, so the first two things you're going to need is a butter knife, so you can raid your kitchen for one of those and you need your rains paper pad so a4 incidentally if you're watching this and you don't have all these materials um, i highly recommend using uh, going to oxlade.com.au um, they've got all this range of stuff that we're using today so rains paper pad first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to rip all the pages out and fold them in half and then use my butter knife to crease them really well Alrighty, as we rip out each page and we fold it in half, this becomes what we call a folio. So that is now one folio. Alright, you'll hear me referring to folios a lot throughout this thing. So every time we do that, we're also going to use the blunt side of the knife to make that crease really obvious. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for all of them. covers of your Coptic book. So you will need your glue, you'll need your two box card covers, you'll also need an assortment of, uh, you only need two actually, so you can pick your mulberry paper out um, or your marbling paper. So I'm going to select one mulberry and one marbling for this instance. Okay, because you are gluing you can also get your Rain's paper pad from before and you can use the back of it as a gluing spot. Move those out of the road. First thing I'm going to do is put glue all over this. Once you've glued that whole surface, just move that aside, grab your paper. If you're using the mulberry paper, you'll notice that there's a textured side and a smooth side. You want to glue it down on the smooth side. So place your mulberry paper in the center and then put it glue face down right in the middle. Okay, then I'm going to smooth it in. Okay, then go ahead and do that with the second piece. So 
remember with the mulberry paper you want to put it down on the side that doesn't have the pattern. Okay, my next step is I need a pair of scissors. I'll just fix up my glue. Now I'm actually going to cut the corners of each of these. You can decide to do that two ways. You might decide to do it as a straight line like this, or you might decide to do it as a semicircle. If you feel more comfortable drawing that out first, you can do so. Otherwise, um, I feel like most people would be pretty confident just doing it as it is. So I'm going to use the semicircle method. And you want to make sure you cut it all the way to the corner of the card. You absolutely have to get there because eventually this is how you're covering your cover. So you need to make it nice and neat. Now these are really lovely little off cuts, so if you would like to use these as decoration for later on, hold on to them. Okay, I'll do the same with this one. And again you've got these cute little off cuts. So you have these two ready to go now. To seal them up, you're going to grab your glue again. And you're going to make sure you glue right along the edges. but also you're then gluing this surface. So to do that, I'll bring my little pad back again so I can keep everything a little bit neat. You can do one side at a time if you find it easier, but your paper you'll find is very delicate. Now, don't just pick it up and roll it around like this, okay? This is a little trick you wanna do to make it nice and tight. So you want to lift it on its end, wiggle it, and then pop it down, and then, oh, got glue on that. Okay, that way, if you have a look, you will get, you can barely see it, you will have a very crisp edge. Okay, then go ahead and do that for the other ones. Mulberry paper is very um, nice for this sort of work because you can actually, it just wants to cling very nicely to the paper anyway, to the card.
can use anything for a cover really. Um, a lot of people will use different nice papers like this. Um, if you want a more traditional look you can actually do it with leather and just use a stronger glue. So um, I've also seen people do it with denim. So you can also cover your books with fabric and then use fabric paint to decorate them. So there's a lot of options you can do to make your Coptic stitch covers. Okay, so there we have two covers ready to go. So now we'll put those aside. The next step we are up to is we are going to make a template so that we can use the template to actually measure out all our pages in the next um, section. So you want to grab one of your folio pages. Remember your folio is one of the pieces of paper folded in half. That's one of your folio pages. You'll need a ruler, a pencil, you may not need an eraser, and you'll need scissors. So the first thing you're going to do is from the crease, so you have the crease here, just remember that, you are going to rule a 1.5 centimeter mark. Five, so I'll make a little mark there, 1.5, make a little mark there. The next thing you're going to do that with that is you're actually going to rule a line. Like so. Easy, easy. And now you're simply going to cut it off. Don't worry about this paper that's being wasted because you will use this in a moment. Okay, so now you have a little folio like this. It is, it's the crease. You are keeping the crease. So we'll put that aside. Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to trim these down and glue them on the inside cover of your covers. You could trim them with scissors or you could rip. I actually like the idea of ripping because I think it looks nicer. This paper rips quite lovely. You can measure this if you like to keep it nice and even or you could just guess. I think it needs a little bit off the sides as well. ripping paper, always hold it down and rip it towards the ruler, otherwise it makes a big mess. Okay, so I think that will be quite lovely. I want to get that roughly the same size here, so I'm going to mark that.
what that's going to do is it's going to give it a look like this. Okay, so you'll have a nice inside section. Put them aside. Okay, you'll now take your template and you're going to use the inside of the crease. And you're going to rule in three centimeters from either side and then make a little mark. So I'm making a little cross. So three centimeters. Little cross. Okay. Okay, then you're going to fold it in half. And then you're going to measure three centimeters from the middle crease. Three centimeters again, do a little cross. So that you have this. Now you have the template. The template is going to help you know where to put the holes in each of your pages. So what you need to grab next is your foam core. You don't quite need your needles yet, so maybe just pop them up out of the road. And you're going to need your stylus. Template, stylus and foam core. This is really important that you have the foam core down because you don't want to be making holes in your parents' table or your own tables. Okay. So once you've got that, you're going to start two at a time. You'll get two folios. You put them one inside the other, open it up, and you'll sit your template inside the inside crease, like so. Then you're going to use your stylus to poke some holes into it. And in this way, you're going to be putting holes in every one of your pages in the correct spot. So now you can go ahead and do that for all your folio pages. get sloppy with it and you know don't get sloppy with it and think it might be in the right spot when it's not absolutely make sure it is always lined up because if you don't have those holes lined up in the correct spot when you come to stitching it's going to be a nightmare for you So all of my folios now have holes in them, so I am ready to roll. Now I'm going to put holes in the covers as well. This is also very important. So when I do the holes in the covers, I'm going to make sure my template is open the whole way. And I'm going to line it up in the middle. So it's along the end. And I'm going to wiggle 
the holes in. This one's a little bit thicker. The other thing you need to make sure you do with your cover is put the stylus back in the hole and wiggle it around. The reason we're doing this is because you need to get a tapestry needle in here later on to actually stitch in the cover of your book. So to make the hole a little bit bigger with the stylus now is a smart idea just to make your life easier later. Okay, next one. So now I have all the holes ready to roll. Now hopefully you guys would have done this beforehand, but my covers are actually a different size to my pages. So I'm going to have to go ahead and actually trim all my pages down a little bit as well and make sure that they all still line up. So um, make sure you do that if your pages are the wrong size. A little bit of troubleshooting already here. So because my pages are larger than my covers, I could do two things. I could redo the covers slightly bigger, or I could make sure I'm lining up my holes correctly so that they will still go through the holes, and then just marking on either side of the paper where I need to trim. And I don't have that many pages, so I'm just going to trim them all. Um, If you're making this at home from scratch and you didn't have the supplies already, I guess just make your pages, you know, cut your pages in half first or fold them in half first. Make sure that you then make your covers to fit the pages. Um, in this instance, these were already pre-cut covers for me. So... They're just not matching up perfectly with the paper, but that's okay. This is what I'm doing to troubleshoot. And look, you'll have troubleshooting that happens at different times. I know my students who are receiving packs to do these are definitely going to have this problem because all the material has already been pre-cut, but it's not the right size. So my students make sure you remember to trim your pages the way I'm doing right now. I'm just lining up the holes, make sure I've got them right. Mark where they're lined up. And trim. Remember those little off cuts from earlier from the corner of these? Well, I'm going to use them to decorate one of my pages. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that you can use them in different sections just to do different interesting things. So I've trimmed them down a little bit further so that we've got a little bit of interest happening, like interesting little bubbles. Now I'm going to place these. Don't forget you'll have to probably redo a couple of the holes depending on where you put them. But I'm going to make this my front page. You can also decorate the front of your book with other things like feathers. Um, one of my other books I covered in feathers and then I sealed it in um, PVA glue to hold the feathers down. Alright, there we have a bit of interest happening there. Okay, this next stage is a little bit tricky for some people so I'm going to walk it through, uh, walk you through it quite 
carefully. Um, you will need two lengths of two meters of wax linen. So I've got two lots of thread here. I'll just split them all up. Okay, and this stuff is wax linen. So what that means is it's actually nice and stiff. Um, it will thread into your book really nicely. Now, what you're actually going to do with each of these, okay, I've only got one here. So here's two ends of the one string. I'm actually going to thread two tapestry needles on either end of this. So we've got two tapestry needles on the one string. So get it through first. Just make sure you twist it a little bit if you're having trouble threading it. The only trouble with this um, waxy stuff is you don't want it to fall apart going through and you can't exactly wet it like you normally would. That's great about wax linen thread is that once you actually thread your needles, all you need to do is just bend the thread over like that because it's not going to pull out very easily because one of the things that's great about the wax is that it grabs. The other thing that's equally important to start getting in the habit of is keep your foam core with you and whenever you're not using your needle, sit it in the foam core so that you can actually keep track of where you're up to and you don't tangle up everything. So. <clears throat> it's really super important at this point when you start doing this that you're going to keep yourself from getting untangled because you have a fair length of thread and it's very easy for it to go all over the shop and get itself tangled. So keep the foam core closed so you can actually use the foam core to manage, <laughs> manage your thread. Um, like you see up in the top left there, I just put them, I just stick my needles into the foam core, that way I know where they're meant to be and what order they're meant to be in. So it just really helps you to know where you're up to with your stitches as well. And it will just help you with your organization. Oh, I hate this part. And even though I've made heaps of these books, I still forget about the steps. So that's why I created the written down instructions that are here next to me and I just keep them next to me to refer to them. Again, I will make those available to people to help, help out as well. So if you would like a copy of the written instructions, just send me an email or something and I can send you the PDF of that. <clears throat> okay, so now I have my needles threaded. I've got them sitting in my foam core so I know what's what. <clears throat> the next step I'm going to do is not to grab a cover but actually to grab one of the folios. So what I'm going to do to start with <clears throat> is I'm going to thread these needles from the inside of my folio to the outside. All right, and then I'm going to attach my first cover. So we start off by just sitting the needles there. I'll do one side at a time. I push them through. The reason I'm not pushing them all the way through is because this is one thread and you want them to be even. So once you do that, get them both through. And again, this is where you see that the wiggling earlier helps. Put them together and then pull them all the way through so that they are nice and even. You might have a little bit of trouble because of the stiffness of the thread. I'll just untangle that because as it's going through it's not happy. I'll get that through as even as I can. Ok. 
shape. And now I'm going to double check that those are even. And see they are not. So again, I'll get my two needles together. I'll hold those threads and I'm going to just stretch it out. It's hard for you to see it right now. I'm stretching it out so I can just make sure <clears throat> my two needles are even at the end. All right. So you can see I have one folio. That's what it looks like on the inside. And now, without making a mess, again, I could put those two there, but I have to be very careful I don't um, get those in the road. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And it is a bit trickier the second time you do it because you are very conscious that you have the second you've got the first thread through and you don't want to upset that wiggling through wiggle 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 hold them together Now what I'm going to do, again, this is all in the name of keep it organized. I want to keep these needles so I know what's what. Otherwise I'm going to get very confused later on. Okay, so that's that side. Alright, so our next step now is actually to attach the cover. So I'm going to attach the front cover rather than the back cover. And the one I want to be my front cover is this really groovy one that I put the spots on earlier. So what I need to do is turn it upside down, look at where the holes are, and I'm going to line up my closed folio underneath the holes like this so I can see exactly where everything sits. Okay, then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. All right, so watching really, really carefully. These two threads are part of, these two are from the one thread. Remember that? These two are also from the one thread. What we're going to start referring to these as is that they are tracks. That is track one, that is track two, okay? The reason we're referring to them as tracks now is because we need to remember the inside and the outside of the tracks for when we're threading. So if you have a look at this, it's like a train track. All right, track one, track two. This, where my finger is, is the inside of the track. There is the outside of the tracks. So it's very important when we're threading, if I say that the thread needs to come up on the inside of the track, that you're very aware of that. So we're going to start with the first thread here. <coughs> so I'll find him. He is going to go around the front cover and come up through that hole. Now if you're looking very carefully here, you'll see the needle is coming up on the inside of the track. If I had it there, that's the outside of the track. Every single time I do this, I need it to come up on the inside, unless I tell you otherwise, but for 99% of the time you need to come up on the inside. So I'm going to wiggle this needle through, <coughs> hold it down if you're having a bit of trouble. Remember we wiggled earlier to make it easier. If it falls off the edge like that, just pop it back up the top. Alright, make sure it's secure. And then, pop that needle back in your foam core to keep it steady. Then I'm going to grab the second part of the same track. This one is a little bit trickier again, because I can't just slide it up on the shoulder. So 
So I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to go around the back. Sorry about all the string everywhere. Around the back of the front cover. Ooh, and I've got to find the hole. Find the hole, find the hole, find the hole. And I need to make sure it comes up on the inside of the track. Okay, like so. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And tighten him down. Now I'm not making them flush right now because I just need to sort it out. So if you have a look, you've got one track, I've wound them around the cover and those threads have come up on the inside of the track. I'm now going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll just get them out of the road. It's okay that they're a little bit loose right now. Okay, we're going to deal with them after. Okay, so I'll make sure got the right needle. Find the hole. Whoops. Getting a bit messed up there. Find the hole. Make sure it comes up on the inside of the chaff. Just lost the hole again. Okay. Okay, so I've done that once. You can see that. Just shift this down a bit so you can see it better. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat that. So we're winding through the cover twice. So just try and keep all your threads separated so you know what's what. After we do the second wind, then we're going to make them flush. Okay, so I go around the back again, into the hole, make sure it comes up on the inside of the track. And that was a lot easier that time, because I've already loosened up the hole. <coughs> Same deal again. Now if you have a look at this one, it's overlapped by accident, just going to pop him back over that side just to keep it neat. It doesn't really matter if it does that by accident, but the neater you keep it, the better your craftsmanship looks. Okay, so that's gone around twice. We'll do the same with the other side and then we're going to make it neat when we're done. You can see how difficult it is with just two meters of string of um, linen thread. Imagine if you're wanting to make a really fat book, how much thread you'd have to start with and how easy it would be to tangle it up. Okay, so now we've got it wound around twice. The next step we're going to do with that is we're going to actually stand the book on its end and we're going to tighten it. 
so that it actually becomes flush with the cover. So we stand the book on its end and each thread we're going to tighten upwards. You need to use a fair bit of pressure, but at the same time, if you're too hard, you're going to break it. So you want to put a fair amount of pressure so it tightens all of the cords. And it makes it nice and flush. See how they're nice and flush now. And remember, I'm pulling upwards. All right, the next step we need to do is we need to wrap the threads around. So this is also a step that we're going to do every time we add another page. So to wrap a thread around, we'll start with one track at a time again, it is always the best to start with one track. So I'm going to start with the outside tracks. Look very closely, I'm going underneath in between the page and the cover and I'm coming up on the inside of the track. So all I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it around the thread I just made. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to go through the paper. Let's see. Whoop, hang on. I'm going through in between the page and the cover. And if I need to go on the other side to look, I can do that. And then back up through the inside of the track. So I'm wrapping him around. That's all I'm doing. I'm just wrapping it around. And then of course, don't forget, put your needles in the foam core to keep it steady. Get it out of the road. Okay, same deal with the other ones. So I'm going around the outside and then I'm going to tighten it up. You're right. I could speed up this bit and put music on it anyway. Okay, now we've wrapped it around, we need to tighten again. So tip on its end, tighten the stitches upwards. The reason I'm emphasizing that you're tightening the stitches upwards is because we'll be tightening them a different direction later. Okay, so there's your first page attached to your cover. Now we're now that we've attached our cover to the first page, we're going to go ahead and start stitching all our folio pages in. So, in order to do the next one, we're going to sit a fresh folio page on top of the other page we've just done. Now we're going to push each thread through the existing holes on the next folio page. So make sure, again, that your threads are not tangled up because you need the correct thread to go in. Okay, so you go in there. So for ease of showing you, I'm just going to sit them in the holes at this point. Okay, if they're tangled up, you're going to end up with a really nasty mess. they're all sitting in the top of the new folio. Now I'm going to open up my folio and I'm going to pull them all through. Just check, make sure none of us. There we go, I'm glad I checked. Got to make sure it's still sitting nicely. Okay, I'll just sit it on the side. Make 
feel that all even. One of those is moving through properly. Yep, they're all good. Okay. Open my book up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a crossover thing. So I'm going to take my first needle, which is this one. And I'm going to thread this one back through that one. Back through that hole so it goes back into the spine. So I'm doing a crossover of the track. So gently put it through. Once he's through, I'll stick him in the foam core so he's out of the road. And then the same deal with the other thread crossing over. This is going to secure the page nice and firmly. How many of you have seen books like this where you actually see the stitches on the inside? Okay. Now the next one. At the moment that's still a little bit tight, so we're going to tighten that up, but we're going to tighten this up differently to how we did last time. When we tighten it up now, instead of tying upwards, we're going to hold it on its end and tie it outwards. So there again, we are tightening it outwards. Now we're going to do the wraparound stitch again. That's going to happen every single time we add new pages. So we wrap around again. Again we're going to go all the way to the front where we wrapped between the first folio and the cover. The reason we are going to do this is because we want to be a few stitches ahead so that we can get a nice plait happening. Even. Okay, and again we're going down between the, the cover and the first folio. If you need to go inside the book to do that, you can do that. Alright, and then go ahead and do that with the other side as well. So down on the outside of the track, between the cover and the folio, and then on the inside of the track. Notice that every time we do everything, everything always ends up on the inside of the track. Okay, and the final one. This stitch is going to change where you do the wraparound. Okay, it's just the wraparound that will change. I'll explain that later. Okay, now we've done that, we need to tighten them again. So remember we are not tightening outwards, we are tightening upwards. Every time you do a wraparound stitch, you are tightening upwards. Alright, our second page is now on. Now you can go ahead and you can actually add the next folio page. So again, remember you're lining it up on the top. You're putting each stitch through the hole into the centre. I like to pre-organize them. If you get all blase and you start rushing, that's when you're going to mess up your needles and get them in the wrong order. So make sure you're always concentrating 
on what you're doing, which is a little bit hard sometimes when you're at home, if someone comes and talks, talks to you, or the dog's barking. But I'm sure you guys will be able to find a quiet space or you'll get yourself into the rhythm that you can actually relax a little bit. Okay, every time I get those through, before I do the crossover, I'm just going to check. See the mess that's happening underneath? If you don't check, you'll end up with knots, you'll end up with mess. Always double check. Especially with this linen stuff because you can't always feel when the thread's through like you can with normal thread. Okay, now it's crossover time. When we finish this folio, I'll show you what's going to change with the wraparound stitch. And then you'll be able to remember to do that for each of your pages. Okay. You're through. You're through. Bend it on its end, tighten them outwards. Okay, now we're ready for our wrap around again. Why are you going at a focus? Focus! Okay, when we do our wrap around this time, last time we went between the first folio and the cover. This time we are counting back one. So we are going between the second folio. So, every single new page you add, you need to count which folio you're going between. Okay, and then remember it tightens upwards, so if you want to tighten upwards now, before you've done all of them, you can. So again, I'm not going between the first folio and the cover, I'm counting in one. So I'm going between the second folio, of the first folio and the second folio. And by doing that, every single time you add a new, uh, new folio, you'll end up with a nice little plait weave happening. Okay, then tighten up. Okay, in the past I've tightened up after I've done all four of them. I'm just trying to show you at this point that if you know where you're going with it, you can tighten it up as you go. Okay, between the second one, between the third one, between the second one, Oh my gosh, I can't even English. Between the first folio and the second folio. Another way you can view it is you can always count back to. If you forget which one you're up to, just count back to from where you're at. And that will help you be on the right track. And as you get used to putting the pages in, you'll start to feel comfortable with how you want to hold it. Some people like to lean it on the table. Some people feel comfortable just sitting doing it in the lounge on their laps. I still feel comfortable having the foam caught here. So there you go, I've done my second page. You can go ahead now and you can start adding all your pages in, but you need to remember every time you do the wraparound stitch, that you have to always count back to or remember which one you're up to. And this is where people usually start getting all tangled up because they're not concentrating, which is what I just did. So this is a great opportunity for troubleshooting. If I had tightened that up, that would have been a bit of a disaster and it would have been a bit harder for me to undo it. But because I have a loop and I saw it in time, I'm going to let that loose. Guys, when I'm teaching this in class, the biggest reason I have people coming to me for help at this point 
is because they were going too fast and they made a knot. Because I'm not physically there to help you, you need to try and catch these knots before they happen so that you can work out how to untangle the knot. And it's really easy to have a knot happen. I've been talking about trying to keep everything tidy the whole time so you don't make a knot and you saw that I will still very easily get myself into trouble. So I'm really glad that happened because I want you to see just how easily you can get a bit cocky and go, ha, I know exactly what I'm doing. And that's when you have a knot. So you've just got to always, you know, it is a relaxing thing to do. I find this extremely relaxing, but it's very easy to miss a step because Okay, so remember, Oops. always, always remember each step. And the instruction sheet I've made will tell you which sections to repeat if you're not sure. Some people feel like they need to um, carefully go over the instructions. Probably for like, you know, some people go, some people are fine after doing two folios. Other people need to keep reading the instructions very closely for about seven folios. You know, everyone's different. And that's okay. But the more you do them, the more confident you'll feel. And the more relaxed you'll feel doing it. Okay, so I'll show you the other method now. I was between there and the first one, then I went between the first and the second. Now I'm going to be in the third one, but the other way of testing this is to go, okay, I'm on this folio. I'll go the folio after me, folio previous, and then go between that one and the one before that or just count two back. I guess, you know, eventually you'll find the groove that works for you. Okay, and that one tightens up. Don't forget to do the whole tighten out and then tighten up. Tighten out after crossover. Tighten up. Then you've done the wraparound. linen, wax linen um, thread will also twist. If it starts getting all twisty, that's when you're going to find you also will have issues with knots. So just be really super aware of it twisting into itself. If you find it is starting to twist, like mine currently is, sorry I stopped going in the video for you. Um, okay, so I'm just forcing that one a little bit. But that tells me I need to pick up my needle and my thread and just let them untwist themselves. Because this stuff is a real pain to work with if it gets all knotty and twisty. If you're going to stop at any point to have a break, I would always suggest stopping right at the end of one of the processes of putting a folio on. If you're going to stop in the middle of something, you're not going to remember at all where you're up to. So right now I'm at the wraparound stage and tighten upward stage of this one folio. That's the last part I need to do. So if I wanted to stop and have a break now, this would be the place to stop because then when I come back all I need to do is go you know what I know what I'm like I know my habits I've decided that whenever I do this I'm going to start on a fresh folio so you know already you can just come along grab a fresh folio and off you go so always remember that guys because some of you will be faster than others I'm spending a whole day doing this right now 
but you may not have a whole day. You may only you might only have like half an hour. So I would suggest if you are um, just starting out and you're trying to do the, all those beginning parts, give yourself a big block of time to do all the beginning parts and at least get yourself to the point of having a cover done, sorry, your cover and your first folio attached. If you can get yourself to that stage in one big block of time, then it's a lot easier to come along and try and pick up where you left off. Um, it's better. It's better to be working on pages like I am right now when you stop for breaks. If at any point any of you get completely, completely stuck though, you can always um, contact me and show me where you're at. People that are watching me on YouTube, that was aimed at my students while we're going through the COVID-19 crisis. However, I'll extend that to you if any of you are just randomly watching this on YouTube and you went and ordered the stuff and you are doing this and you get stuck, you can always email and say, oi, help. <laughs> or, um, additionally to that, I'd love you to show me what you did. I'd love you to show me your finished products. So don't be afraid to send through photos. My art students from school, you don't get choice. You have to show me your photos. <laughs> See, whenever it gets to a rat's nest like this, deal with it before it becomes impossible. Always keep your tracks separated, that way you'll know what you're doing. Okay, here's my next troubleshooting video. So sometimes you might go through with a folio and you're trying to you're doing your thing and then suddenly they're tangled up but you've already put it through the page so you're just gonna have to learn how to untangle these things yourself sometimes so the best way to do this is to just push your needle back through the same hole you only need to do one of them get it through there and then you can try and get <laughs> undo that silly little knot that you've just made so I'll just push it back through. I guess the biggest thing is guys, when it comes to troubleshooting, just before you tighten anything up and you don't know where's what, try and just carefully look at everything. Just check everything before you tighten things up and make sure nothing is knotted into something else. Otherwise you'll have a big disaster. Okay, now that one's back to normal. We're all good to go. Okay. So now we've put all our folios on, see them all nice and pretty. Um, I'm sure, look, the reason some of them bow sometimes is because you might tighten them at different spots and accidentally rip the paper a little bit, but that's okay. Look, this is what makes them so different and original and you know what, I love these books. Alright, so anyway, now you are up to the stage of putting your back cover on. So I'm going to grab my back cover. And I'm going to line it up like so. And I'm going to do something very similar to how, what I did last time. So it's kind of like the opposite. So I'm going to go around the back of it. So wiggle, wiggle. Okay, so it ends up on the inside. Then I'm going to push my needle through the inside again so it's on the inside track. Okay, so I've got that sort of thing happening. And I'm going to do the same thing with all of them. 
and it does start out quite loose but I'm winding it round twice again remember how we did that last time and now I think I've stuffed it up yes I did stuff it up so now I'm going back again anytime you stuff it up Work that out while it's still loose. Get him back through there. <laughs> so easy to do, isn't it? Okay. So I'm going through the cover on the front. Then I'm going back through here on the inside of the truck. See that clearly there? That's a really easy way to look at it, actually. I'll do the same here. I'm going to keep my I'm going to keep my cover angled like this because it's just so much easier to see it. Ugh. Just tighten those up a little bit. Not neat. So I'll go inside, up, over the front, through on the inside track. Sit in there. Final one through the cover, wiggle it through, inside track. Okay, neaten that up a little bit. I'm going to do the exact same thing again now. Remember with our front cover we went through twice, we're doing the same thing here. So I'll put him on an angle, through the front cover, wiggle him through. A little bit trickier this time to wiggle him through. Now you can see the importance of using that stylus at the beginning. There we go. Using that stylus at the beginning to really wiggle that hole on the covers. Okay, and then back through on the inside of the truck. So we've got this sort of thing happening. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you just don't want to work. Tighten, tighten, tighten. That doesn't want to go through because I twisted it up. on his end, tighten these ones upwards, tighten 
tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Awesome. Now what we're going to do to tie this off, oh wait a minute, we've got to do a wrap around first. So wrap around the second last one. Nearly forgot the wrap around. Tighten up again. So I'm going between the last folio and the second last folio. So I'm, I'm basically still counting back two. And inside of the truck. Oh, this one's a really good book. I'm very happy with this. I'll tell you one thing right now is I am loving this marbling paper. Yes, so really. Now that I'm at that stage, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put each needle through the hole in the last folio. So if you're having trouble finding that hole, open up the second last folio, the last folio like this. Because you need to try and find that hole underneath all this braiding, which makes it very, very tricky. Okay, I find it easier sometimes to go on the outside of the truck when I'm trying to find that because I'm already sitting on the inside of the truck and I can see the hole easily for the outside of it so it's a lot easier for me to pull it through. Okay, then I'm going to have my needles on the inside of that page and I'll show you how to tie off. Okay, I'll go to the outside of the truck bring it in, outside of the track, whoops, now I'm in trouble finding the hole, just gone straight through the thread, that's okay, really doesn't matter at this point because we're tying off, okay you'll have all your needles on the inside now, now to tie off, it's very simple, you're just going to go around the outside of each track and then loop through itself like one knot and when you tie it off, tie it off away from the track to the outside like that then when you do it you can trim it off okay next one through there through the loop to make a knot outside of the track tie it off Break it off. Cut it off. <laughs> All of the above. Okay. Just a regular knot. If you want to do more than one, like this, that's completely up to you. But honestly, you don't have to go nuts because it is that nice linen stuff. I leave a little tiny tail. Don't be tempted to cut it really, really flush because that's when you're going to have issues with it possibly could come undone and you don't want it to come undone so just let it have a tiny little tail okay just tightening it to the outside I'm going to do it again just to show you just a knot to the outside so those two go inwards those two go outwards when you're tying off your knot and there you have it there's my front page. Gorgeous! And there you have it. A Coptic stitch. Beautiful little artist book done with your beautiful Rains watercolour paper. So now you've got this beautiful personal journal that's ready for you to fill up and absolutely enjoy and treasure. So again, I love making these things and they make a great gift as well. So if you find you really enjoy doing it, 
don't hesitate to go buy some of the stuff and, and keep doing it. The more you do it, the more you're going to be comfortable doing it. But yeah, it's definitely something that's worth doing because it's really fun. Okay, enjoy.